This has been a very difficult and tragic case for R.J. Johnson's family and his extended family, the correction officers. Um, today, the Department of Corrections, as difficult as it would be because it involved one of their own, carried out a constitutional sentence by the South Dakota courts. I ask that tonight to please remember uh, and prayer, pray, and send prayers for all of Burgett's victims, the two individuals that he had shot, the young female store clerk that he sexually abused and kidnapped, and of course, R.J. Johnson and his family. With that, I'd like to turn it over to his daughter, Missy. Today was about choices. Burgett had choices along with the others involved with this case. He chose to be evil. He chose his evil very deliberately and in an elaborate scheme to get what he wanted no matter what the cost. In my life, I've made choices and I've, choose, I've chosen to overcome tra tragedies and difficulties. I choose and we choose as a family to be better. The day it happened, I'll never forget that day. I was in the trauma bay when my dad rolled through that door and I stood there and I watched him lifeless with no heart rate on the monitor, no breathing. And rolling in to the trauma bay with nothing but a towel over his head. And I told him when I grabbed his arm and his head that it would be fine. It wasn't fine that day. I had to call my brother who wasn't there yet to tell him my dad was gone. I still regret that day and telling him the way I did. I went into that room with my mom to have her grab me and shake me and tell me that I needed to fix this. We needed to fix this and bring him back. My boys at that time were 10, 8, and 3, and my nieces and nephews were all under the age, I think, of 5. They have a real fear of evil and bad guys. From that day on, we all wonder what our future would hold. At that time, my, my nephew was three weeks old. At 15 months old, we heard bagpipes playing randomly somewhere, and he put his hand to his head and saluted. That little boy was robbed of his papa. He stands alone and salutes. What babies have to do that? My son was 10 at the time. He's now 19, and he chose to come today. We all have kids that are afraid of things they shouldn't have to think about. They have worries of possible things that can happen. None of my family should have been a part of any of the horrible things. My kids, when they were 11, saw autopsy pictures from the day that my dad was considered a crime scene. And those memories sit with us and haunt us to this day. Our worlds were forever changed that day, not by our choice, because we've had choices. We've had supporters along the way, and to them, I say thank you. Do you have anything to say? No. You?
tonight is our second execution that we've had to be, shouldn't say have to, it's a choice as our daughter said, I guess it's a choice. But the fear of having someone just tell me the execution has been successfully executed, it's not enough so you are kind of forced into watching. I just want everybody to know that Marty and Paul and Sherry, Doug Barnett, Paige, Cindy. Well, Cindy, of course, Cindy. Cindy's leader. Um, without the Attorney General in his office prosecuting these cases, with Rodney Burgett and Eric Robert and Michael J. Nordman, their jobs, the death penalty, there's not that many on death row. It is truly hard to get somebody to be in death row. The aggravating circumstances is very high that you have to do. So to be on death row, you have to be pretty, pretty evil. I want to thank Cindy for being there at every motion hearing without the victims crime DCI specialists, our family would be lost. For everybody that thinks that the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment, I have just this to tell you. Watching Ron's baby brother die of cancer a month ago was cruel and unusual. It was long 15 days, very painful. Tonight, just like with Eric Robert, painless. He made a noise, as the media will tell you. He did. I think he said, ouch, after he made a joke. He made a joke. That was it. He just laid on this clean white table. A couple deep deep breaths. That's it. What's embedded in my mind is the crime scene. Ron laid in a pool of blood. His blood was all over that crime scene. The ceiling, the walls, the pallets. They broke his neck. They severed fingers broke his wrists. He didn't have the back of his head because when I first held the back of his head, he didn't have. The back of his head was gone. That's cruel and unusual punishment. What Burgett went through, what Robert went through, peaceful, clean, sterile, dignified what they did to my husband, our children's father, and scarred our grandchildren for the rest of their lives. The death penalty, the executions, please don't feel bad for Burgett or Robert. Denny Davis said that he didn't want him to be alone, so he was going to walk him. He didn't want him, him to walk alone, to suffer. My gosh, really? I will invite every single one of you to our house and show you the photo of what was left of my husband. I'll show you it. There was nothing left of him. The whole thing with the execution was to hold everybody accountable. 
We held Eric Robert accountable. We held Rodney Burkett accountable. We tried to hold Michael J. Nordeman accountable. But the Department of Corrections has decided that he doesn't have to serve any time for what his part was. Michael J. Nordman supplied two pipes to SRAM wrap, knew the day before, knew the day before that they were going to kill an officer the next day, and he didn't say anything. He could have. He could have saved Ron's life. He was supposed to serve the rest of his life out in administration segregation. Paul's office, Marty's office, they tried. But guess what? He is now in general population with a job in North Dakota. And for our correctional officers on all levels, that is wrong. The safety of our correctional officers has been from day one. Right? 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 Correctional officers. You would think. The Department of Corrections would think the same way, too. Some of them don't. I just leave you with this. For everybody that thinks that they've got to say something in person, on social media, please. Our grandchildren are older now. Please keep it to yourselves. You want to be hateful? You want to say something? Hey, I get a landline. Call and do it to me, but leave our grandchildren alone, please. Leave our grandchildren alone. Russ, Grace, Matt Freeberg, Liz, for all the first responders that were there that thought they could help Ron, but it was too late. To everybody that tried to help Ron. Thank you. I said it with Robert, and I'll say it with Forget. I stand proud and pray every night for our correctional officers. Paul, I see you back there. Thank you. Cindy. Attorney General's office, you better never get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs>